You may have seen my experience with the Hi-Fi X a while back. If you haven't, it is linked in the description. My feelings about that car was that it was fun to drive, it was packed with tech and unique features, and it had some very, um, I guess I should say, distinctive design decisions. But that ultimately I didn't really have too much to complain about in the end. It wasn't really a car that was for me, and that's okay, not everything is for everyone. It was a little bit too outlandish, a little bit too look at me, and probably a little bit too big for most people. But I'm sure there are people out there that are looking for something that screams for attention from onlookers and are enthralled by all of the extraneous bells and whistles that are offered by the Hi-Fi X. Sales of that car are pretty decent, all things considered, for a car that costs around $100,000 and is potentially incredibly polarizing. Pretty much every day that I go outside here in Shenzhen, I see at least one or two driving around, so it's not a total flop. Recently, Human Horizons launched their Hi-Fi Z. I guess this is their first attempt at a more mass market car. It is classed as an executive car, and starting at 610,000 RMB or 87,000 US dollars, its price point is a bit more approachable than the Hi-Fi X executive version that comes with a champagne cooler and tops out at around 100,000 US dollars. The Hi-Fi Z's length is 5.3 meters, which means it is somehow slightly longer than the Hi-Fi X, although it doesn't really look bigger when they are in the same room together or when parked on the curb. The Hi-Fi X is a chonky beast, and the Z's more streamlined sporty appearance gives it the illusion that it is smaller than it is. Make no mistake, it is still big and it still looks big, but I can hardly believe that it is actually bigger than the Hi-Fi X. The Hi-Fi Z comes in either a four or five seat configuration, and although I'd argue it still looks a tad ridiculous, it does have a more conventional look than its predecessor. The Hi-Fi Z accelerates from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.8 seconds, which is impressive and expected. It slightly edges out the Hi-Fi X, which clocked in at 3.9 seconds, and the time is marginally behind fellow electric executive car, the Neo ET7, which accelerates 200 in 3.7 seconds. Of course, these times are all negligible and they don't particularly matter, but for a car that looks this aggressive and this sporty, it doesn't necessarily translate to otherworldly performance when compared to other high-end EVs. Still, driving the car was fun, handling was very responsive, and much like the Hi-Fi X, rear wheel steering helps make the massive car more maneuverable than it should be. It is easy to access different drive modes simply by pressing the paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel. Pulling back on both shifters at the same time also allows you to set the amount of regeneration from virtually none to quite strong. It doesn't fully allow one pedal driving because the car doesn't come to a complete stop, but it comes to a crawl very quickly with full regen on. The top charging speed, I do not know exactly, but Hi-Fi claims that you can charge from 30% to 90% in about 45 minutes, and the battery pack is 120 kilowatt hours. Much like the Hi-Fi X, you get all the bells and whistles, including dot matrix programmable LED in the front and back, as well as on the doors. I can imagine that some Chinese executives would love to be able to have the door light up and welcome their business partners when picking them up at the airport. Think about all that Mianza that you get with this neat party trick. The car also still has a front DLP projector, which can do wild things like project a turn signal onto the road in front of you, or a virtual crosswalk to give pedestrians peace of mind that you are stopping for them and it is safe to cross. This only works if A, you can dig into the menus quick enough to have it be useful, and B, that the pedestrians have any clue what the hell you are doing, and why is that weird thing being projected into the road? You know, until this is standard on all cars, most people aren't going to have a clue what is actually happening. And that's the same thing with sending out thumbs up or heart emojis to cars behind you to indicate, for example, that you want to appreciate them for letting you merge in. Like a lot of the extras that this car offers, it's cool ideas in theory, but I think that most cars around you in traffic won't know what the heck you are doing. And by the time you do access these emojis or projections in the menus, it's probably going to be too late. On the other hand, the Hi-Fi Bot, a new feature in the Hi-Fi Z, does allow you to enable quick actions, which are very similar to those found in next generation Neos. Along the top of the center screen, you can set two common quick actions that can be activated with just a tap. The sales staff told me that most people would use these quick actions for common navigation, uh, like home or work, or specific driving scenarios. But he did say that you could also set them to the front projector or your favorite emojis, or pretty much anything. He said it's fully customizable. So let's get into the Hi-Fi Bot. This is their new operating system for this vehicle. It includes a telescoping and articulating center display screen, snappy OS, autonomous driving, cool visualization options, and more. Honestly, it seems a little bit over-engineered, a little bit too complicated, but considering I only had a brief time to play around with it, it's kind of difficult to make any sort of true informed opinion on its functionality over time. When it comes to the interior, there are things I like and there are things that I don't like. I know this kind of thing is highly subjective, based on my take during the Zeker 001 test drive that I did before. I said that that car had a little bit too much going on with different patterns and textures. You know, if you've seen that video, you know how I'm gonna feel about this car. While I do appreciate that they are going for something different in a sea of similar looking interiors, to me, it's a little bit too much visual noise. Additionally, for a car at this price point, 
It has a bit too many hard and plasticky parts, even high touch points that should ideally feel soft and luxurious for a car that's $90,000. I think, like most things about the Hi-Fi brand, the interior will be divisive. Some people will love its bold, busy, futuristic approach, while others will wish for something a little bit more minimalistic. I'd prefer minimalistic, at least a little bit toned down, but again, not everything's for every person. My biggest complaint regarding the interior, which I don't think is a subjective one, is that for the rear passengers, the leg position is far too high and the angle of the legs is far too acute. For how much space is actually back there, it feels like you kind of have to scrunch yourself in. And yes, I tried to adjust the seats to my desired position, but I just couldn't find a really comfortable spot. I didn't get to try out the app, which is an important part of most EVs these days. The salesman told me that they do not currently have sentry mode, cat mode, or pet mode, but they do plan to offer new modes via OTA updates in the future. The Hi-Fi Z does have two interior cameras that can be viewed at any time via the app, as well as climate control via the app. So that makes for a decent approximation of pet mode, if that is something that you need. So as an executive class car here in China, how will this car do for China's executive class? Honestly, I think it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. Of course, it's flashy and that's going to be sure to turn heads, which a lot of executives here desire. But on the other hand, it doesn't really have a classic, ageless, timeless look that is known to last over a period of many years. At this point, it's unknown. Because of its futuristic vibes, it's either going to age very poorly and very quickly, or perhaps it will lead a new trend and every car on the road will, some, will look something like the Hi-Fi in the coming years. And in that case, you're ahead of the curve. But I'd bet on the former. Some of you people who have been viewing this channel for a while, you know that I used to work with Chinese billionaires. I used to know a lot of really wealthy Chinese businessmen. And I can say that from my experience, what they all craved was attention. What they all needed was face or Mianza. You know, I learned this very deeply from my previous boss. He always told me face is the most important thing that you can get. Face is more important than money. It's more important than family. It's the most important thing in China. Of course, this doesn't apply to everybody. Not everybody has this thought process. But from my experience, there were a lot of very wealthy Chinese people who shared the same opinion. And what that meant was that we rolled around in Rolls Royces and Bentleys and Porsches and Lamborghinis all storied brands, classic brands, to shout out exactly who you are and what you are about. The badge told a story. These were cars that turned heads and they made my boss and his peer group feel really good and get Mianza, get face. And not just because of weird parlor tricks like programmable lights on the doors or ostentatious styling choices. To be honest, to me, the Hi-Fi feels kind of like a car for Tuhao. And if you don't know what a Tuhao is, well, Wikipedia or Google will tell you that it means nouveau rich or tacky. And while I don't think that's exactly a perfect translation, because for one, I wouldn't call the Hi-Fi Z tacky, I do think that a gold-plated Hi-Fi Z would be a two house wet dream. Anyway, if you are Chinese or you speak Chinese and you made it this far into the video, feel free to comment if you agree with this assessment that this car kind of feels like a car specifically catering for two hao. Maybe I'm way off base here. I might be. I certainly don't know everything about the Chinese psyche. So really that's that for the Hi-Fi Z. It's an improvement, I think, over the Hi-Fi X in some ways. I don't know. It's very similar. It certainly feels like it's a bit more normal and a bit more approachable at first glance, but it's still certainly a car that I think will be quite divisive. I appreciate that they have their own unique design sensibilities and that there certainly is a market for unique offerings like this. You know, I'd love to see them continue to tone it down a little bit more in the future and make a car that's a little bit more traditional while still kind of preserving what makes their brand unique. For the price, I do wish it felt a little bit more luxurious, a little bit better materials throughout the car. But, you know, I don't hate it. I don't love it either. But, you know, it is what it is. It's it's a car. It's a Hi-Fi Z. I guess ultimately my feelings are very similar to what they, are, what they were about the Hi-Fi X, which was... It's a car for somebody, but it's not a car for me. So let me know what you think about this car and thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye.